All right. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Hey, uh, I'm Brett, pastor at the church. I made a prediction about the Super Bowl last week if you were here. And things didn't go the way we planned last week. But I'm now 4-17, and 17, and unfortunately I was right last week, and the Kansas City Chiefs won, in case you were wondering. But anyway, ushers, ushers. Okay. Anyway, we're going to uh, take on a new series uh, beginning today called Blessed, hashtag blessed. And it's from the life of Abraham. Abraham is an Old Testament character, really among the Jewish people, the sons of Israel, the Jewish Jews people. Abraham is the most famous. I mean, there are a lot of people to choose from in the Old Testament, from King David, you know, as great as he was, and Joseph, and Jonah and the other prophets, Elijah. But I think they would all say that, uh, would they? I don't know. <laughs> would they? <laughs> Abraham. You know, Abraham's the man. And uh, the reason is because the whole nation of the Jews, the, the nation of Israel, comes from Abraham and a promise that God made to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. So Abraham's the father of the Jewish people. Abraham has Isaac, miracle child. Isaac has twin boys, uh, Jacob and Esau. Jacob, the younger, becomes a father of 12 children, and from those 12 children come the whole nation of the Jews. So it goes back from, you know, Jacob's 12 sons to Isaac to the man, Abraham. And Abraham uh, lived... Uh, 2,000 years before Christ, all right? So this is a long time ago that we get to peer into this person's life. It's amazing. Um, and, but he's a, he's a man of faith, and he's blessed. And that's why he's famous, because he trusted God and believed in God, and as a result, God richly blessed him. And that's why we want to tie in. We want to tie in to the life of Abraham and have blessing in our own life. <clears throat> Uh, he's a man of faith, and we have in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews, uh, it's called the book of Hebrews because it's written to Jewish Christians, okay? Christians uh, are Jewish people who had become believers in Jesus. The book of Hebrews is written to them to explain how Jesus Christ is the promised Messiah, how Jesus uh, fulfills the Old Testament types. It's helping a Jewish person put the Old and New Testament together. And it helps us as well, but it's uh, the book of Hebrews uh, talks about Abraham, and it also talks about faith. So let me give you the definition of faith from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and then we'll see how Abraham illustrates a life of faith. It says, faith is, to have faith then, is to be sure of the things we hope for, to be certain of the things we cannot see. So I want you to notice here that Faith is to be sure, and faith is to be certain. Surety and certainty, all right, of the things that you can't see. So faith is the idea of um, it's an anchor for the soul. Sometimes we think of faith in our own culture as, uh, you know, a positive, somebody who has positive thinking, right? Like, Hey, we're really behind, you know, in the fourth quarter, you know, but have faith, man, have faith, right? And, uh, you know, they'll, they're going to they're gonna pull it out at the end, have faith. Or we say, you gotta got to keep the faith somehow, you know, um, be positive. But that's not the biblical definition of it. <clears throat> it's, not, uh, it's not, I have faith, and so then, therefore, I hope something happens. You know, or maybe, you know, to have biblical faith is to be sure. Biblical faith is certainty. It's just the things you can't see. Like, I don't know, I, I can't see God, but I'm certain of his existence. See, I can't see uh, heaven, but I, I am absolutely, I can't with my eyes, I, I, but I'm absolutely assured of it. That's, how do I, how can you say that? Because I have faith. In God's character, God's promises, all of that. Interesting Greek word, uh, hypostasis is the Greek word. That's a good one for you, right? Hypostasis. And it means to be sure. It means to be certain of something, hypostasis. It's the, the opposite Greek word of hypostasis is hypothesis. 
You heard of that word, English word, all right? Uh, hypothetical. Hypo hypothesis means maybe, right? It's hypothetical. Maybe it'll happen. We need to be tested out. We need to figure this out. It's a, it's a hypothetical situation that might or might not be true. Hypostasis in Greek is the opposite of hypothetical. It's, it's sure. So the question is, how strong is your faith? And to the extent that your faith is growing and is strong, to that same extent, you'll experience the blessing of God's promises in your life. You'll, you'll be blessed because you know the Lord and you trust in the Lord and you're certain of him and you're seeing him be faithful to you and work in your life. So some of us in here, you know, our faith is just beginning. I mean, just just came to faith. We say it that way. When somebody becomes a Christian, they've come to faith. They've come into a relationship with God. And their faith is at, you know, maybe just a beginning level, and it needs to grow. Now, how does it grow? Well, it grows by hearing Scripture and learning Scripture. It grows by going through trials and troubles in life and seeing that God is faithful to you and provides for you, and faith grows. But the stronger, the better. Now, Abraham was somebody who had a really strong faith. So uh, here's, here's the illustration of Abraham's life in Hebrews chapter 11. And then we'll look at uh, it again in Genesis chapter 12. But Hebrews chapter 11, illustration, it says about Abraham's faith. By faith, okay, or by his certainty of who God is, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance, and he went out not knowing where he was going. So here's the situation. God calls Abraham. He's in Mesopotamia, Ur of the Chaldees. He's, he's there. He's just like you and I, just a normal guy, all right? He's got his whole family, and he's got his business, and, you know, he's got his kids, and he's, he's got you know, his life to live, and God calls him. You know, it's like, whoa, God calls him. Like, not unlike when a person becomes a Christian and they hear the call of God on their life to leave, you know, what life was before, what might be familiar to them to come to Jesus. Abraham, just like you and I in Mesopotamia, God says, come Go, leave your relatives, leave what's familiar, leave your family, um, your extended family. He goes with his wife, Sarah, and, and all of that and their livestock. But go to a place I will show you. And amazingly, uh, he went out <coughs> says that he went out not knowing where he was going. That's what you call a lot of us would say to God, uh, I'll go, but I, I need to have some guarantees in writing <laughs> from you. I need to have some kind of contract that I won't be hurt, that it won't be a bad experience, that you will, in fact, do what you're supposed to do. You know what I mean? Like we want certainty through something else, some other arrangement or agreement from God. Abraham gets none of that. He goes out not knowing where he was going. So this is the famous man in the Bible. As somebody told me after the last service, uh, men are still like this. They go out, they don't know where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> they don't ask for directions. They, you know? That's what I used to tell our kids when we were, where are we going, Dad? We just we're just going, man. We're doing the Abraham thing. We're just going. All right. <clears throat> Let me give you a principle here. To be blessed, obey when God calls you. Okay? Obey when God calls you. Now, last series, we talked about how God speaks to us and how we can hear from him. And when he calls you, you, you obey. How, why would you obey? Because of faith. You're trusting him. Are you trusting him? So you're responding to him. Now, we, uh, we in our own lives, and, and I can attest to this, uh, we have a hard time with this because we like everything nailed down. We like everything explained. Uh, we like everything, give, we like assurances. But here, God may be calling you 
to become a Christian today. I mean, just, you know, you feel, you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit to become a Christian. And uh, you, you respond to that by faith and trust. You don't, you don't have a clue as to what it all means. I remember when I became a Christian in high school, I just... I kind of felt like Abraham, you know, here, here is Abraham, and he gets the call of God. I, when I was in high school, I just felt God calling me to himself for salvation, I mean, to become a Christian. And I didn't understand everything. I didn't know where I was going, you know. I didn't know where I was going. But I said yes to that, I said yes to that. And here I am these many years later from that moment um, looking back on my life and, and seeing what an adventure it's been. Thank you, God. You know, obey when he calls you. I, I often like to think about where would I be in my life if I hadn't responded to the call of God? Uh, where would I be? And I, I, I honestly, I kind of shudder to think of where I would be in my life right now, whether I'd be alive, you know, what my, my, whole, my relationships would be like, what my life, I mean, I don't, and, and it doesn't matter where you are in your life right now, when you respond to the life, to the calling of God, and you obey Him and go where He wants you to go, I'll tell you, I promise you from right now, your life's going to be blessed. He's going to bless you. Does it mean there's no problems, there's no trials, there's no difficulties, there's no uh, things you have to endure? No, it doesn't mean that. But He's with you, and He will bless and take you. All right? And I don't know where you're at here today, but I'm just saying, some of you come in and you're like, Man, I've been like doing this life thing without the Lord, and it has been horrible. I want to go through it with Him, which leads to a, a second principle. But obey when God calls you. By faith, He went to live in the land of promise. That's the current day land of Israel. That's the promised land. Okay, He was promised that land. He went to live in it as in a foreign land, living in tents. All right, living in tents with Isaac, his son, and with Jacob, his grandson, and heirs with him of the same promise. So here we are. God says, hey, you know, come follow me. And Abraham, not knowing where he's going to go, goes, and he leaves everything and makes his way down into the land of Israel, Palestine today. He makes his way down in there, down there, and he's, he's living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, and we're like... Okay, what's next? <laughs> huh? What's next? Here we are. What are you going to do, God? And I mean, you, you, this is the benefit we have now uh, with the scriptures. You can read the whole life of Abraham from this, from the beginning all the way to the end. And I want you to do that during this series. Pick it up at Genesis chapter 12 and just continue reading to around chapter 37, somewhere in there, 36. But just read the work of God in Abraham, it's, it's amazing. You know, you get, you get to the end of Abraham's life and look back and go, what an adventure. God fulfilled all his promises. But here he's just, he's in a tent and uh, he's living, he's living by faith. Now, part of what encouraged Abraham was that he was looking beyond his present circumstances to the whole plan of God. It says that uh, he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. In other words, he's, he's in, this, in these tents trusting God for the future, but he is like looking to the ultimate and, you know, the, the kingdom of heaven, the, the new heaven, the new earth, all that Jesus is preparing for those who love him. And it's like, when, you, when you're living your life by faith and you're trusting God for the next step, you also got an eye to eternity. And you believe in God for that. And you're prepared for that as well. I mean, it's just an amazing statement about Abraham. But a principle, certainly from him is his life, is he obeyed when God called him and he continued to live a life of faith. Because here we are, we're sitting in Palestine. Um, Abraham had no idea what the future was. He had no idea what the future was. But he wasn't worried about the future at all. 
See, we, we just, we're worried about the future. We're worried about the future, what the plan's going to be, what our health's going to be, what our money's, money situation is going to be, what the world's going to be, you know, what the economy's going to be. I mean, just, just constantly worried about the future and planning and all of that. And then the future comes, and we're now in the present, but we've got to plan for the future again. And so then the future comes, and we're stressed in the present because we've got to plan for the future. We're just robbed of blessing. Robbed of blessing. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't plan, you know, like, hey, I don't have any plan at all, man. Yeah, I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying that Abraham, listen, wasn't worried about the future at all. Why? Because he was with the one who held the future, and he's with God himself, his faith in God. See, that's the, that's the whole key to the blessed life. It's not knowing where you're going, but it's knowing with whom uh, that you are going. If you have, if you, have, if you know with, with whom you're going, then the circumstances don't matter. It's it, because the Lord's ability to handle the circumstances, whatever they wa- are, are fully adequate and sufficient. I mean, you, you, whatever trial or need you might have in the future, God is fully able to supply. Fully able to supply. You have direction needs. You have health needs. You have financial needs. You have, I mean, whatever. Relationship needs. I mean, God, God is fully able to supply Abraham knew that, so he had no fear of the future at all. Now, a question for you is, how much joy do you have? How much peace do you have? How much blessing do you feel in your life? You say, I'm constantly worried about the future. I'm constantly worried about what's going to happen, my kids and my life and our relationship. I'm just constantly, okay. So, okay. This isn't a put down. I just want to say you need to grow in your faith in God. Right? Does that make sense? I mean, you need to grow in your faith in God uh, uh, so that you can go not knowing where you're going. <laughs> and you're okay. Because it's, it's, it's the one year, it's God being with you. Like, for example, you know, couples fall in love. And then they go to our marriage thing on Friday, you know. So, uh, the couples fall in love, and they move into these terrible apartment. Apartment. They have nothing, right? They have nothing. No money. No marble countertops. Just like junky stuff. And they don't can't afford furniture, so they you know they get newspapers and stack them up and put a drape over them. I mean, it's just. But you know what? They got nothing. This young couple in love, but they're fine. They're fine. Why? Because of the relationship. They have each other. Right? They have each other. It's not the circumstances. It's the relationship that matters. I mean, you go. You have to go to the doctor because of some ache and pain or some fear, you know, something on your neck or whatever it is. And something internal, and you go to the doctor, and you don't know what the circumstances are, but you're worried about it. Okay, you're you're definitely concerned. You've done your Google search, and now you're a mess. Okay, you're a mess because you've been on Google about that thing. All right. (laughs) And you walk in, and you sit down in the doctor's office, and your blood pressure is way up. Then the doctor comes in sits down, begins to speak to you, and obviously understands what's happening to you and and has very calm words to you and encourages you. And right away, your emotions come right down. You feel better. Now, nothing's changed about your situation. Nothing. But it's who's with you that just changed everything. You see, for Abraham, it wasn't that he was going. He didn't know where he was going. He knew with whom he was going. 
That's, that is the answer to the blessed life, knowing with whom you're going. So God is able to handle your future. God is able to handle your needs. God is able to provide, to direct, to sustain, to give wisdom through a relationship with him. Faith is the assurance, the conviction of things that you can't see. Faith takes hold of you know, the things that the uh, human eye can't see to the point where it gives you peace and assurance and you're not worried. You're not worried. This is what God wants. Now, how are we going to grow in faith? Well, as I told you, it's, you're going to grow in faith through Scripture. There's a verse in Romans that says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's like we're going we're gonna to study the life of Abraham. You're going to just read it. There's so many stories like this in the scriptures of just what God does. You're going to read it, and it's like it's going to hit you, and your faith is going to grow. And, you're, and it's also going to grow over time as you catalog and see the faithfulness of God in answer to your prayers and providing for you in tough times and all of that. Um, but this is, the, this is the blessed life. Live your life by faith. Now, here's the original call of God in Genesis 12. Hebrews 11, okay, written, um, you know, in the first century, but Hebrews 11 uses Abraham as an illustration of what faith is. Now, let's go back and see the original call. And this is where you want to start reading in the Bible to get the life of Abraham. He, this is, look at chapter 12. He, he's 2000 B.C., okay, 500 years before Moses is Abraham. Before the law was given on Mount Sinai and before all that, uh, he goes way back. Uh, and this is what God it says about him. Now the Lord said to Abram, his name was changed to Abraham, father of many nations, after he, you know, uh, began his, to his family, so to speak, began to grow. But anyway, now the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country and your kindred, and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Now, Hebrews 11 picks up and says, and we can, you read it, but Abraham left, not knowing where he was going. He settled in this land, the promised land, land of Canaan. He settled there in tents, looking forward to, a, you know, a city whose builder and architect was God. He, it's just his trust. God says, go. Uh, to a land that I will show you. We're not going to give you any guarantees here. So Abraham goes. And then God says this, verses 2 and 3 are amazing. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. Here's what you do. You go and you trust me. Just go. Obey my call. And then we got the most blessed life coming that you can imagine. Because I'm going to make you a great nation, Abraham. I will do this. This is not something that is conditional on what you do. I'm going to do this, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing to other people. And Abraham's name, is a, he's, it's a great name among the Jewish people. Abraham. Um, and certainly blessed, and they'll have a they'll have a, a place for them. Now I want you to I want you to think about this. So again, Abraham has Isaac, Isaac has Jacob, Jacob has twelve sons, and from those twelve sons come the whole nation of Israel. And there are about two million people when we get to the time of Moses. Two million slaves in Egypt. Moses takes them all out. Right? They come out, but they've multiplied up to a couple million by the time Moses takes them out uh, of their bondage in Egypt. Um, and they're still going. The nation is still going. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. This nation that began with Abraham 4,000 years ago, 2,000 years before Christ, is still here. <laughs> Have you ever thought of that? Let me think about it just a second. I mean, the Akkadians aren't here, and the Hittites aren't here, the Amorites aren't here. 
Okay, the uh, Philistines, meet any Philistines lately? They're not here. Ancient peoples, long gone, everybody. Guess who's still here? The children of Abraham, the Jewish people. Where do they live? Where do they live? In the land promised to Abraham. What's their capital city? Jerusalem, founded by King David a thousand years before Christ. I mean, this is like, <laughs> seriously? I mean, this is one of the, one of the proofs for the existence of God is the nation of Israel. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, it's amazing. I will bless you. I will bless you. And I love this. You will be a blessing. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Abraham, there's going to come a person in your line. You're going to become a great nation. But in that line, Abraham, in your line, um, there's going to be one who will bless the entire world. The whole earth will be blessed. You know who that's a reference to? Jesus Christ. Read the Gospel of Matthew. The Gospel of Matthew, we have four ma Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Gospel of Matthew begins uh, this way. The genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Hey, Jesus Christ fulfills this. How does he bless us? How does Jesus Christ bless the entire world? By being their Savior? Dying for sins so that salvation can be in Jesus Christ through what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross. There's no other name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ who is the seed of Abraham. And he blesses you. God has blessed the whole world through Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. This goes all the way back. Actually goes all the way back to Adam and Eve. The seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. Genesis chapter 3. Who's the seed of the woman? Jesus Christ. Who's the seed of Abraham? Jesus Christ. Son of David. Son of Abraham. So he's, he, is a, he is a blessing. He is a blessing. But God does it. I will bless you. I will make you a great nation. I will do it. So that you will, in fact, be a blessing. Interesting phrase here. I will bless those who bless you. And him who dishonors you, I will curse. This is why many pastors, and I'd, I'd obviously agree with them, say that anti-Semitism is one of the worst things a nation can do. <laughs> because you, it's like you're, you're cursing those whom God has blessed. The people of God, stay away from that. Let's pray for them, right? And uh, and let's let's uh, let's recognize the heritage of the Jewish people. It goes all the way back to Abraham, and God promises. So we're not, you know, we're not anti Semites here. We're not anti anybody here. And I'm just saying, the whole earth will be blessed. Let me give you a final thing here, and that is this: receive, then. The blessings of God, all the blessings of God. Now, I told you that we're like, we're all like Abraham um, in this sense. We're all living our life, right? Living our life. And then at some point along the way, <laughs> you hear the call of God. And God says for you to come out. Come out from what your, your extended, your friends perhaps that, that, that don't know God or your life that's in a direct heading in a direction opposite of God. Come to me and to the place I'll show you. And so you you become a Christian. You give your life to Jesus Christ. You in fact obey and come to him. And you live your life by faith and God fulfills his purpose in you and through you. I mean what if Abraham had said, nah you know, what if I had rejected the call of God? I mean, yeah, I hate to even think about it. 
But you're like that Abraham. And why did God choose Abraham? Why did he choose him? And I tell you, I don't have any answer for that. The sovereignty of God, the plan of God, the mystery of what God does. Why would God, why, when, if you're a Christian here today, why did God choose you and open your eyes to see by faith who he is and respond to him? Why you? Why you? You go, because I'm such a great person. <laughs> we know you. Wrong. It's the grace of God. It's the mercy of God. It's the mystery of the work of the Holy Spirit. And I, I know the Holy Spirit's at work in here today. And he call, he's brought some of you here, not by mistake. You're here because God wanted you to hear his voice and come out into this life of faith. Now, when you become a Christian, the Bible says you receive all the blessings of God. It says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and uh, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. When you come to Jesus, you receive every spiritual blessing there is to receive. You say, well, what are those blessings I receive in Christ? Here's one, forgiveness of your sins. There's a nice blessing. In Christ, through Christ, because of Christ. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing that there is in the heavenly places. Here's another blessing you receive because of Jesus, eternal life. You know, Abraham was looking for a city whose architect and builder is God. Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. Guess what? When you come to Christ, because of Christ, you have eternal life. It begins now and goes on into eternity, a city that you look forward to. Here's another blessing, redemption. Purchased by God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Here's another one. Adoption. You've been adopted into his family. You're a son, a daughter. The spirit in you cries out, Abba, Father, which is another blessing. The indwelling Holy Spirit who teaches you, comforts you, strengthens you, guides and directs you and seals you and lets you know you belong to God. I mean, you're, you listen, you are rich. You are blessed. And just like Abraham, you know, you and I are blessed for what purpose? To be a blessing. To be a blessing. I mean, to our friends and our family and in our neighborhood and our, you know, community. To be a blessing. That's it. God's blessed us so we can lead others to Christ, encourage others, build others up in the family of God. Hashtag blessed. Abraham was blessed. But you know, it's, it's, it's definitely directly related to your response of faith to the call of God. Some of you, you know, we become Christians, but then our faith, for some reason, just comes to a stall, a standstill. And we can't make the next step, you know, the next uh, decision. I read about the African impala. You know, you love seeing in the tundra, the African impala, as it runs, you know, away from predators or whatever. But the African impala, th the African impala can jump over 10 feet high. Just like, and 30 feet, over 30 feet long. So it's like, vroom, vroom. Thought about what's my vertical leap? <laughs> How far can I long jump? You know, no. I, if I showed you, we, we'd all go visit me in the or at the orthopedic. I mean, I mean, I probably have a three-inch vertical leap. You know, <laughs> but the African impala—it's like wow, impressive creation of God. You know, let me tell you something about the African impala. You know, in a zoo, <coughs> you can keep an African impala enclosed with a simple three-foot wall around. A three-foot wall. They will not go over the wall. Say, what? All they need to do is just a quick jump, and they're out. They won't do it. You know why? They won't jump where they can't see where their feet are going to land. Wow. 
Like so many of us, though, right? I mean, unless I can see. And God's like saying to you, look, don't be afraid of the future. Don't be afraid to take a step of faith. Because you know who I am, right? You know who God is. And it's not about where you're going. It's with whom you're going. So let's go. We want the blessed life. You know, we want to be used by God. We want to be fulfilled in, in all he's doing. But it begins with you and Jesus. It begins with your relationship to him and then that growth in faith. Let's pray together. And as we pray here this morning, if you're here and you have not come into a relationship with Jesus, I want to give you that opportunity that was given to me so many years ago. If you can hear the voice of God saying, come away, come out from where you're living, come out from what you're doing, and come into a relationship with me to a land I will show you, to a life I will show you. And if that's you, just say, yes, Jesus, I'm, I'm here, I'm coming, I respond to you, I believe. And you too are blessed with the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and the hope of eternal life and the presence, the abiding fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Just say, Lord, I need you. I'm yours. I hear your call. I'm all yours. Let's go. And Lord, for our church, I pray you'll help us to walk in faith, take steps of faith so that, in fact, we will be blessed and be a blessing Use us to that end for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.